Hi, this is uh, Ras, uh, aka Jet again. Uh, this video tutorial is on how to convert color or grayscale text uh, scans or text images to black and white. Uh, before I start, uh, I want to apologize for my uh, bad English. Uh, English is not my native language, uh, so bear with me. I would like to also. I would like to give a big shout out to uh, DIYBookScanner.org uh, community. Uh, over the years, I found a lot of useful information uh, on this side, especially from the forum. Uh, regarding hardware and software just anything really imaginable as far as um, book scanning concerned and I think it's a great uh, resource for anybody who is serious about home uh, digitization digitization of the printed uh, material so with that said um, let's get started so I have this uh, old book, it's about 15-20 years old and I wanted to digitize it and usually when I digitize, I mean uh, when I scan, I scan black and white straight out of the scanner and then I uh, crop, straighten the pages and output them in a, a PDF format. Unfortunately, uh, this could not be done with this book. Uh, let me show the. Uh, uh, this is the page of the book I took uh, with my camera just to show how it looks. And as you can see, um, uh, this book was published on a on really cheap paper um, it has a feel of almost a, a newspaper uh, very thin and it, it also aged it has this uh, yellow tint um, in a similar way as news old newspapers look so uh, I just want to show you how the black and white scan looks so when I saw it, I was surprised. I mean, as you can see, it's a black and white scan, but the page itself, the text is fine, but the uh, the uh, background of the page is, uh, is really grainy. It's almost uh, very artistical, artistic in a, in a way, I even like it, but uh, you cannot this is this I wouldn't use this quality for printing uh, or digitization so I needed to find a way to turn this into black and white so for comparison same page uh, uh, this is how it looks in grayscale and let's see the the color scan of the same page and that's the color scan I'm going to be using for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to be using uh, this this image color scan I also would like to tell uh, say that all my scans uh, this ones are in 300 dpi which is a standard in, for printing, it's industry standard. Uh, usually I prefer to scan at 400 or even 600 dpi just for added uh, detail and it let the higher uh, dpi allows me uh, more room for tweaking and all kind of changes I can do in Photoshop. But this is 300 dpi. So uh, I'm going to be using Photoshop CS uh, program. So before I start, uh, the way I do, I put 
all my text uh, scan text uh, files uh, onto or into a uh, a new file that is A4 proportionate. Uh, most of the modern printers are they really designed to print in A4 format, which is your regular format you, you see when you print uh, any sort of paper on a regular base. So I created this A4 blank A4 um, file and I'm going to be using this in Photoshop so let's open it and let's create the let's make a copy and so that I can keep the original for future use and next I'm going to open the the color scan of the book page I'm going to be working with and I already uh, straightened it and cropped it so next I'm gonna go under marquee tool and I'm gonna select the page layer and then I'll go under edit copy and edit I select a new file and edit paste the reason I do this way instead of just dragging the layer uh, because uh, when the copied layer lands on the on the new file uh, it lands uh, symmetrically so the margins on the both sides are equal so it's just uh, less hustle as, as far as trying to uh, align the new layer so let's close this that's what we have here let's go ahead and merge the layers flatten them and I'd like to make a copy because I'm going to be showing you two ways of turning this color image into black and white so the first one is uh, fairly straightforward and easy all you do you um, first of all, of course, you go to mode and turn this into grayscale. Obviously, you can skip this step if you scanned it in grayscale. Uh, but here it is in grayscale. Next, we're going to go on the image adjustments. And then I'm going to go to threshold. And right away, uh, it turned black and white. And then you can, in the histogram, you can adjust the amount of uh, black. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you can adjust it to your liking, but I usually leave it. And then press OK and let's save this. Save as. And of course it's in TIFF and, and then let's call it page black and white. Let's call it good quality. Let's call it good. Uh, always for compression, I always choose LZW because it gives about 30% smaller file size without any loss uh, to the quality. So let's close it and let's go ahead and see it. And here it is. So that's how it looks like with a threshold method. So it's black and white, it's a nice white background and letters uh, are legible uh, so it shouldn't be a problem if you decide to print it out. But uh, there is another way of doing this which gives a little better result. So let's go back and here's a copy of the image. So once again we're gonna go ahead and convert it to discard the color convert it to grayscale and and this time what we're going to do we're going to create a new layer by pressing control j uh, i believe on mac it's command j and this we did so we could play with uh, different blending modes so what we're going to do we're going to go in the blending modes we're going to choose screen and what's gonna do is gonna whiten the image really 
and as you see the amount of grain is cut in half just with one layer but what we're gonna do we're gonna put four more by pressing control J control J control J control J so there's five layers and basically uh, all the backgrounds becomes white and the uh, text itself is still visible but it's almost like a uh, matted so let's go ahead and merge flatten the image and now we're gonna go repeat the uh, control J again but this time for blending mode we're gonna use multiply and uh, what it's gonna do is gonna bring the whatever black color left back so we're going to do five times so it's five layers in a multiply blending mode and as you can see the black came back but you know, the background really uh, uh, the page itself is turned white it was just playing with blending modes so we're gonna flatten it and uh, here we have it and by the way uh, different books mm, obviously they they publish on different quality of paper and the ink might be a little too much or too less so you have you can play with a blending mode with uh, um, a multiplying screen so it doesn't have to be five times in your case it might be three times or two times so with that said, let's go ahead and save it. And this one we're gonna call page black and white and let's call better. And again I will zoom up in compression and now we just gonna go ahead and compare. So this is the first one we did. And we'll open the the second one so as you can see uh, at least to my eye the second method uh, the one that we play with blending mode we play it uh, looks better to the eye so and it's uh, the letters are not so edgy you know not so pixelated I guess that's the correct word and the reason for that is that, that there is it's, the second meta is not just just straight black and white color there are some you know there's some variation so it keeps the uh, gives a nice uh, pleasant look to the letters and the downside of this of course is the file size if the first one is just uh, let's see it's just it's about 76 kilobytes but the second one, the, the one that uh, we use blending mode, it's almost 400 kilobytes. Uh, so what it is, it is uh, what six, seven times bigger in size. But if you're doing it for printing, I mean, um, it doesn't really matter. But for comparison, the color image um, scan, it's it's uh, uh, where is it? It's here. It's 4.6 megabytes. I mean, of course, that would be huge. So, another thing I wanted to uh, touch on: you can automate this process through recording an uh, action, and then going uh, to file menu and automate and batch. The only thing, uh, the way I do, I just uh, put everything in one folder. So after I prep the images for processing I copy that folder and then uh, let Photoshop do its magic 
within that folder so it opens and saves within the same folder the copied one with that said I hope uh, this tutorial um, oh yeah I forgot uh, to show the final result uh, here is the um, on the right uh, the original page and on the left the printed page that I used with the blending modes printed on a standard A4 format so came out quite nicely and then you know what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take it to FedEx and have them uh, bind the pages and, and, and turn them into a nice good look so basically uh, digitation, digitization gives a second life to printed material you can print it, you can store it on your computer and it's just the way to go well, with that said, I hope my uh, this tutorial was uh, of use to you guys. And um, uh, once again, sorry if you had hard time understanding me, but at the moment that's the best I can do. Um, have a great day.